Hey, I'm Pallavi and um, I moved to Kuwait a few months back for a project and I figured that one of the things I wanted to do was um, explore more of Kuwaiti literature because I never really read a book by a Kuwaiti author before so I figured I'd just pick up some books by Kuwaiti authors so what I did was I bought about uh, seven books that were all written by Kuwaiti authors um, not all of them are about Kuwait or about life in Kuwait. Some of them are, but not all. Um, like, in fact, the one that I'm going to discuss today is by a Kuwaiti author, but not really about Kuwait or has no like reference to Kuwait, for example. So, yeah, so that's basically what I wanted to do. So the book I will want to discuss today is called White Swan, The White Swan, and it's by Mariam Omar and it's just like it's a very short read it's a nice read and it's basically written by a 14 year old so maria Omar was actually 14 when she wrote this book um and what's really cool is obviously one is her age like she was literally 14 when she wrote this but also like she mentioned one of the things is that like she never really saw a hijabi main character who you know is powerful and heroic and sort of like saves the day and you know, just uh, is a strong character so she decided that she would change that and she would write a book with a strong uh, main character that is hijabi so that's really cool honestly that like she's literally just like yeah 14 or 15 and she's gone and done this which is really cool um so yeah and i think also like knowing this about the author like knowing her age and her motivation kind of also really helps put the themes of the book in perspective. So the book overall is, I would say the main themes are fighting um, control and asserting yourself, like asserting oneself and freedom. These are probably the main themes of the book. And I will, I do want to discuss the plot in more detail because I want to discuss my thoughts about different aspects of the book. So there will be a lot of spoilers throughout. So just letting you all know. Um, but yeah, basically the book is about this uh, young girl. Uh, her name is Bella. And uh, unfortunately when she's a child, her father goes missing. And no one really knows what happened. He's never really found. So essentially he's out of the picture. And his mother... Uh, her mother decides to remarry. She marries this guy called Mr. Michael. And uh, so her mother's name is Aura. So Aura, Michael and uh, Bella, they all move into Mr. Michael's house. And unfortunately, like she gets very lonely in this place because uh, her mother and Mr. Michael sort of get busy in their lives. And they also decide to homeschool her. So she really doesn't have any friends or any companions at that age. Um, and this is all like when she's nine years old, around that age. But she's a very talented girl and she kind of like self-taught herself, um, you know, French and piano and drums and um, art and painting. Yeah so, like, I mean, yeah, so it's really, she's just very talented, but lonely. Unfortunately, uh, the problem, so all of this is the context, yeah? The problem, this which is this phase, is that Mr. Michael's actually kind of greedy. So he is rich already. He has like a big house and he already has money, but he's still very greedy. So what he kind of does is he realizes that Bella is very talented. So he kind of decides to overload her and pressurize her into also making money. So he essentially like makes her do acting jobs and like, you know, she becomes an actor, she becomes a performer and she makes a lot of money through that. Um, but that money goes to Mr. Michael. Like he doesn't, you know, have an account for her or something that she can uh, tap into when she's an adult. It's just the money just goes to Mr. Michael. And uh, he also sort of, when she turns 15, he also like makes social media accounts for her that he runs and monetizes. But that money again goes to him and not to her. So essentially, but like this whole time, he's putting a lot of pressure on her. Like literally her entire day starts with, doing classes attending shoots just working so it's either studying or making money and it's gotten so stressful where like she's not really able to sleep properly and she's stressed out and upset and she no longer really enjoys her hobbies you know like she doesn't even enjoy the things she does um i mean she does enjoy certain things like she enjoys 
playing the violin and she enjoys um, reading detective books and she wants to become a detective when she grows up but she doesn't really enjoy any of the other things she does so but the thing is she's a bit hesitant to tell her mom about it um, because she thinks that it might ruin the relationship that her mother has with Mr. Michael um, and also her mother unfortunately doesn't perceive it as exploitation she thinks oh you know Mr. Michael is sort of like pushing my daughter to uh, fulfill her potential she's not really seeing it as extra pressure or extra like just exploiting basically for greed for more money and just because of greed so yeah that's kind of where where, where Bella is at like she has this problem and it's just really gotten too much so now basically comes the phase of the book where the problem is dealt with like so Bella sort of tries to resolve this conflict and this actually is my favorite part of the book because um, it's dealt with differently than I imagined it would be dealt with so when I read the excerpt of the book right I just thought maybe it'll be a book about like um, Bella just asserting herself to this Mr. Michael and her mom and like just basic conversation or some I don't know I just I didn't have much of an imagination basically when I read it uh, when I read the excerpt but I like that this phase of the book which is this conflict resolution or the beginning of it at least has a lot of magical realism in it um, like there is fantasy in it like there is magical realism which I think is just cool it makes it so much more interesting and also very fitting so I'll give you some context. I won't go into too much details, of course, but I will give you some context so that I can discuss my thoughts about it. But um, essentially what she does in this phase, what Bella does in this phase, is that she creates these wings, these white wings for herself, and she steals a rocket from like some office building, like a jetpack sort of a thing. And she essentially becomes a flying creature. So um, she names herself the White Swan, and she does three things, okay, in this phase. She, um, one, like, has this very, like, um, stern exchange with the police chief, uh, because the police chief is obviously, like, asking her to return the rocket that she stole. The second is she stole a piece of jewelry and returned it. And the third is she tries to save the princess. So basically this princess is someone who is in a similar situation to Bella, in the sense that, like, she's never been seen by the world, uh, it's it's a known fact that the king controls this princess's life um, very inten intensely. So Bella kind of feels for this princess and she kind of wants to save her, yeah? So this phase is about these three things. Now what I like about the choice of the flying and like the choice of the wings and the rocket is, you know, like wings and flying obviously like is very closely associated to freedom, right? And I think it's just very fitting in this context because the book is actually a bit about like not a bit it's completely about her asserting herself and achieving freedom and yeah so I think it's a very fitting choice uh, that Mariam chose for Bella because technically she could have gone like Mariam could have chosen like an invisibility cloak to do all the things that she did in this phase or she could have chosen like a I don't know like a disfiguration something I don't know like she could have chosen any other method basically but she chose flying which is cool um, it just makes the most sense it fits the best and the other thing I really like is each of the three episodes right the first one which is um, having that exchange with the police chief about the stolen rocket I think it sort of like explains the feeling in Bella that is bubbling to come out like the feeling that is repressed or, or, or yeah like just sort of needing to be expressed so like i'll give you an example the very first um exchange right that she has with the police chief um she stole the rocket and she's sort of flying around and the police chief basically says um give us the rocket back right now and Bella chuckles while saying, oh, don't worry, sir, I'm just borrowing it. And uh, basically when she said that, the chief got really pissed off and really angry. And he was like, who are you? And she just says very calmly like, oh, I'm glad you asked. You can call me by the name White Swan. And she then goes on to dictate like saying, um, I'll see you all tomorrow near the town's clock tower at this time. So 
it kind of shows like she's asserting herself she's dictating the terms now which is obviously a stark contrast from you know her life where mr michael is dictating all the terms in her life literally from when she gets up to what she does in the day so you know we this is her taking back control and asserting herself unfortunately she can't do it to mr michael because of the family dynamic that she wants to protect but it's nice to see that she's so bringing out that emotion she is asserting herself to someone um so that's the first one right and then even the second one i think is very similar it's like she steals the jewelry but gives it back immediately it's not like so she's kind of indicating like hey i'm capable of making good decisions i'm capable of acting on it and i i don't intend on doing harm like i'm just you know uh i just want to be free and do my thing so yeah and the third thing where she wants to save the princess i think that's the more heroic side of her like she's good at everything she does and i think it's a bit like she wants to while she's saving herself through like this whole thing of being white swan she also wants to save this other person that she thinks is in the same boat as her essentially so i think that's like the more heroic side of her that she wants to express uh yeah through this so i definitely like this phase the most cuz one i think like as a 15 year old it's a very fitting theme right like to assert yourself um but also i think like daydreaming and fantasy is such a a huge part like at least was a huge part of my life when i was a teenager and probably still is a huge part of my life and i think so i think this taking a fantasy route in this section just makes a lot of sense because well even in like real life not everyone's able to assert themselves or um is able to sort of seek freedom so i think so a lot of times it comes down to escaping into your daydreams and seeking freedom and asserting yourself so i think it just makes sense that this phase of the book is through a very like you know fantasy element essentially um anyway so this takes us to the final phase yeah the final phase of the book which is kind of like the final resolution and basically what happens here is the princess who she was supposed to save unfortunately gets attacked by somebody else um a gang member and this bella and the princess essentially like bella also obviously follows her and like they escape the gangster the gang member yeah but now they know there is a threat there is some gang out there or some person out there interested in harming the princess right so anyway <coughs> the two ways that this situation is now resolved in this phase one is bella decides she wants to solve this whole issue of the princess not being in the palace so she goes to the kingdom talks to the king says like hey the princess is with me but i will only bring her back once you listen to my concerns and your princess's concerns so then she tells him about how he's been controlling her life and you know he's been stifling her desires and um he's not letting her live and how the princess wants to live her life the way she wants to so the king kind of realizes it and sees her point and sort of agrees like you know okay you know what bring her back and i will um actually change my ways and he does he actually like that's that kind of gets resolved there yeah like that whole issue of like wanting to save the princess in from the controlling father she manages it because he is no longer controlling them um uh, however when she goes back from the palace to like pick up the princess and take her back to the palace she realizes that um the gangster like the, the gang has come to the hotel that they were staying at and has now captured the princess and this is kind of where the twist comes in because um okay so remember the police chief that i mentioned a few minutes ago who was having that exchange with bella about giving that rocket back so he's gotten really frustrated with the fact that he's not been able to capture bella um and now bella wears a mask yeah in public so like he's not he doesn't know who she is uh, and he's not been able to capture her so he's very frustrated and this gang approaches him and he decides to join them because he's really pissed off and he really wants to capture this bella and he wants to expose her to the world and the gang the other gang members their motive is uh they want to kidnap the princess and basically extort money from the king and get rich 
So now the twist here is one that of course the police chief is also part of this gang. But second, Mr. Michael, who is uh, Bella's stepfather, he is also part of the gang. Um, obviously he doesn't know that White Swan and Bella are the same people because of her mask. But uh, yeah, so she does. Like, she realizes like, oh shit, like Mr. Michael is also part of the gang. So, okay, so now the resolution here, obviously I'll keep it short. Like it's, um, there's a lot of like, you know, trying to escape and failing and um, again, trying to escape. But they finally managed to escape and they finally managed to go back to the palace. Um, of course, Bella is really badly hurt. Like she's also kind of in a coma for a while, coma for a while. But, uh, and for, so then how she resolves it is she actually goes to her mother and tells her like, hey, this is what's been happening. I've been feeling very stifled by Mr. Michael. I've not been able to, you know, be free and just um, fulfill my desires. And then she also tells her about the fact that he's actually a gangster and just tried to hurt her and her friend, the princess. So the resolution of this section basically comes from the fact that the mother then realizes the truth and divorces Mr. Michael and also threatens uh, sort of like ratting him out to the police in exchange for so like basically she threatens him and then says okay I won't rat you out if you give all the money that Bella earned to us so then yeah so he does and then they start like they get a own place of their own and then they start life again so that is kind of the resolution of the book and the book ends there it actually ends with a little bit more of like showing how they're happy in this new life without Mr. Michael and Bella's actually become a detective now. She's always wanted to be a detective and she's become a detective now. So that's kind of where the book ends. Now, I like this book. I think it's a really cute book and I think um, it was really nice and I'm glad that it had like a good happy ending. The one thing I really wish was maybe added to the book was um a clarity on what happened to the father like okay so basically in the beginning of the book they mentioned how the father went missing right and they have no idea how so i thought like oh maybe there'll be some mystery or some resolution to do with that towards the end so in the last few chapters i kept thinking oh maybe mr michael kidnapped him um or maybe like i even thought like oh maybe the king is the father uh, because you know the princess and Bella kind of become almost like sisters honestly so I was like oh there was this theory in my head like oh what if like they became sister like because they're meant to be sisters but that also wasn't the case um, and then finally I thought okay she's become a detective now maybe she solves the mystery of what happened to her father but that didn't really happen either so I wish maybe that was something that they closed in the book that you know what happened to the father like she it would have been cool if along with the final resolution the father's mystery also gets it got resolved um but that's okay i mean yeah it's fine but i really did like this book and i think a 15 year old me would have also really enjoyed it because i really like the whole fantasy element of it um so yeah and i think it was just really cool this is my first uh, book by a kuwaiti author so i think i really enjoyed it and i would love to read more books by maria mamar if she writes more and i hope she does so yeah and i will continue to read more books by kuwaiti authors and discuss them on here so if you did like this i would love it if you could subscribe so you could engage with my future discussions so yeah bye